What's up my transmission people? We've got another one in here for another fix it again. This one here behind me is a 48RE out of an 06 truck. Uh, it's actually a build that I did several years ago and the customer just purchased the truck so it's a secondhand purchase and he wants to convert it over to a full manual valve body. You can see it's still got the TTVA motor on it. So we're going to bust this thing down and see if it needs refreshed. Uh, customer said replace whatever it needs. So we'll go through and see how it's been living, get it fresh, get it right, get it swapped over to full manual valve body. We'll talk a little bit about some specifics with that as we go through it, so stick around. Like always, we separate their overdrive section first and take a look at our overdrive brake clutches. Uh, these things got some heat in them down here towards the reaction plate they've got a good amount of heat in them these are what's called a alto black clutch yes i know they're not black they're more reddish brown color uh this was built a while back when we couldn't get gpz clutches during covid uh these clutches are actually really strong though we went 497 and 142 miles an hour with these clutches in jp's transmission uh so these actually do have a lot of holding power so i don't think that they're burnt because uh, they're not up for the task. I think that uh, these are just ready to be changed out. If you do a lot of overdrive burnouts or if you beat on your truck and overdrive a lot, the overdrive is a pretty weak gear because of all of the torque that you have put on it. They'll still hold a bunch of power. You can still drag race with overdrive and everything. It's just that eventually these will start to burn like you see here. You'll have to go through and change them. It's not a big deal. Uh, it's part of a typical refresh. So we will put this back together with some GPZs this time and go back together with it. This thing clearly had a pretty bad rear main seal leak. So I will let the customer know about that. Uh, so that way he can go ahead and stick a rear main seal on this thing while we're at it. And we'll get this cleaned up so it doesn't look so ugly. You also might see this converter seal missing and go, hey, wait a minute. I thought you said that all of your triple disc stuff is apply regulated lockup and we need to run that converter sealing ring. That is true as of today. Back when this transmission was built, we only did apply regulated lockup on thousand plus horsepower builds. Truth is, those are really the builds that need it. Lower horsepower stuff usually doesn't. But since then, we've decided to, if it has a triple disc and a billet input, we go ahead and do apply regulated lockup on everything. So even though this is an 800 horsepower unit, because we are putting a new full manual valve body in it, we will set it up for apply regulated lockup and we will run the converter ceiling ring moving forward. Let's take a peep at this second gear band here. Overall looks to be actually in pretty good shape. You can still see the green of the lining on it. It's not uh, overly black in any areas. You can definitely see the three areas where it was applying. You can see the kind of the color difference in that. But overall, this thing looks really good. Uh, because it is a few years old, we are going to go ahead and put a new one in it. These bands are cheap. So uh, be one of those things where I would feel a lot more comfortable if we just stick a new band in it. So that way we know it's good to go. Everything looks okay on the drum, feels good. Just needs a fresh resurface for the fresh band and that'll be good to go. So these are our direct clutches. These are on in third gear. Uh, decent, starting to show some signs of heat up here towards the top. That's always gonna be common. As you get further away from the apply piston, that is where you're going to see the most amount of heat because these are the last clutches to stop slipping when it is applied. So everything all the way up until the top two here look really good. The reaction blade's got a decent amount of heat in it. I probably won't try to resurface this one. I'll probably go ahead and put a reaction plate in it. Uh, and then we'll replace this whole clutch pack. Uh, there's no reason to just go through and put, you know, two clutches and two steels in it. We'll make this whole deal fresh so that way it is good to go for a long more life of service. These are our forward clutches. These are applied in forward, so one, two, three, and four. And then they release for reverse. And like always, these things should always look perfect, and they do. Uh, I will go ahead and put a new set in just to be on the safe side, even though there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. It's a brand new customer to me. He wants a fresh transmission. We're going to give him a fresh transmission. Something to note on the direct drum here. I get a lot of people that will call me and say, hey, I have your build or I have XYZ builders. I want to stick a full manual valve body in it. It's currently a full functioning. One of the reasons that I say that's a bad idea is because on my stuff, at least, you definitely want to run 12 return springs in the direct drum with a full functioning valve body. You typically run nine. 
So to change this from 9 to 12, you've got to obviously take the whole transmission apart and press this apart and add three more springs in it. So that's what we're going to do. So we get the customer set up right. And then when we get further into the transmission case, I'll show you guys another thing that's probably even more important on a full manual valve body and why you do not just want to slap one of those in if your transmission is built as a full functioning unit. Onto our low reverse band. This is applied in manual first and in reverse. So in a full functioning valve body where you drop it and drive and go, uh, this doesn't really ever get used unless you're backing up. This is the one area where I will actually not replace this band unless it needs it because I have ran into some issues with aftermarket low reverse bands where you have to be careful with them because you will get in trouble. So if it has a good OEM low reverse band, if you guys are building these things yourselves, whatever the case may be, I would recommend you leave it alone especially if it's a full functioning valve body because it doesn't get that much use anyways. But this one's in great shape, drum's in great shape, everything checks out good. So in this aspect, we will put clean this up and put it back in the transmission. Now that we went through the main clutches and bands, let's take a look at some hard part stuff. So this is our one, two geared set planetary. And we're looking at our thrust washers here. And these thrust washers look fine. Really uh, nothing too wrong with them. You can see where they're breaking in. They got some wear in them. That's pretty normal. Uh, there's really nothing wrong with them. We could put them back together. But because this customer wants this transmission fresh, we're going to go through and just put new thrust washers in it. So that way it is good to go. Let's dive into the pump here and see what we've got. Gear pocket area looks nice and happy. We're looking for deep gouges, any scarring inside of the gear pocket area. Around the outside of the gear pocket, we're looking at our pump bushing to make sure that it is still stationary and looks good. The stakes are doing their job on this one. Everything looks good in the pump body itself. The pump gear is in good shape. You look at the outside here, it doesn't have a bunch of wear. The tip to lobe clearance is good on it. That should be between two and seven thousandths max. And then you always want to make sure that your stator support doesn't have any scarring in this as well. Uh, that would be indicative of converter ballooning or over time cavitation issues or even just debris issues. So all of that feels good, looks good, smells good. We will put the pump back together and it'll be good to go. I know I do this a little bit backwards. You think that I would just go ahead and take the overdrive planetary section apart while I had the overdrive section off, but I just like going through it this way. No rhyme or reason. You can do it any way you want if you're working on your own. But everything's looking really good in here. These are the overdrive direct clutches. Uh, I've said it in previous videos, but you should never ever have a problem with these unless you are like coal, two-tone coal, and you try to do a spool up in reverse. Uh, that's really about the only time you're gonna have an issue with these. Uh, but these look great. This is another one of those areas where uh, since these were you know fresh clutches when I first put it together a few years back, they have very little job to do. Uh, we are going to put these back together. There is absolutely nothing wrong with them. Soak them in some fresh fluid and clean all this stuff up and back together the transmission will go. All right, let's talk low reverse servo. So I told you guys that this is one of those areas that needs to be changed. And this is probably the most important change that needs to happen in a full manual valve body. A full functioning valve body stock transmission is going to have a small low reverse spring and it's going to have a just a stamped sheet metal retainer. When you do a full manual valve body, you absolutely need to upgrade to a heavy duty rear servo spring. You can see it is quite a bit taller than the stock one and it is a stronger spring. A billet rear servo should be a mandatory, in my opinion, on all things, but definitely need to do that as well. And then you need to do the billet retainer, very important as well, because not only will the spring not fit over the retainer, or into the retainer, I should say, but you don't want to just flip this around and do it like that. I've seen some guys flip them around and do it like that, uh, because it will bend these little sheet metal retainers. So you absolutely have to run the billet retainer to keep that from failing. You need the heavy duty spring and you need the billet rear servo when you are doing a full manual valve body. 
We are all back together now, painted up in the silver that the customer requested. I think I'll call this one a tin man. Because we did a manual valve body, it needed one of my TV adjuster kits. So I've added one of those to it. I've also cleaned up where that pesky oil leak was. All of my parts go through a parts washer. So every time we get one of these things, regardless if it's new, used, refreshed, doesn't matter. Everything goes through the wash. Everything gets nice and clean. And everything gets a brand new finish put on it. So this one's all done and ready to go back to the customer. So that's going to do it for this episode of Fix It Again. If you guys are liking this stuff, make sure you drop a comment down below. Tell me what you think. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel so every time I post new transmission-related videos, you guys can get in here and check them out. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you watching. Catch you on the next one.